Hello and good morning. This is the Breville Barista Express that I'm selling. Model BBS 870 in brushed stainless steel. This is actually the latest model Barista Express. Um, so this is the one with the nine bar over pressure valve. Um, so it won't exceed the 12 o'clock mark on the pressure, which is good for the machine's longevity and good for the coffee. This is also the version that has the dosing cola included in the box um, so this will reduce the mess that you get when you make coffee on this model uh, yeah so this one actually has all the accessories included it is a used machine so it's been used for about a year and a half um, so it's got wear and tear mainly around the front where the cup goes in and out uh, right here so that's uh, expected I would say um, a few scratches on the back plate here, a few stains on this side as well. Honestly, nothing too bad. This can always be polished out or replaced, so nothing I would worry about. Machine takes about a minute usually to, to reach full temperature. Um, when you see the, the lights lit up, that means the boiler is up to temperature. But if you want to make a hot cup of coffee, you want to warm up the machine. So you've got, we've got a couple of ways to warm this up. You've got the passive method, so you can leave, leave the machine on for five or 10 minutes. Uh, you can leave your cups on here, and in about 10 minutes time, the machine will get nice and warm. So all the internal lines, the valves, the group head handle, the cup, they'll get nice and warm for you in about 10 minutes if you leave it on. Um, but if you're in a hurry, for example, in my case, I'm in quite of a hurry. So I want to warm it up really quickly. And what I can do is run a blank shot. So I'll get my cup, make sure the handle is empty. And I'll run a blank shot for, for example, the double button. It's going to give me some hot water into the cup. It's going to warm everything nice and quickly. Uh, and this process actually acts like a bit of a cleaning cycle. So if there's any coffee grounds, or oil stuck in the group head or in the handle, this will, this will clear those out. That was the double cup. Let's try the single cup for you just to give you an idea. So this is the amount of water you get in the double cup. Uh, I've reprogrammed this last night. Uh, actually, so this uh, from factory, it would give you too much coffee. But last night I made a coffee on this machine just to get the settings right for you. Uh, I used grind size number six. I used one o'clock position on the grind amount with the double shot setting, and the double button. I set it to about forty grams. It's pretty pretty good. Yesterday I got thirty nine grams, which is good for an espresso. Let's see the double the single. Awesome. That's what we get with this with the single button. Now, uh, I'm about to put some beans into the machine. Uh, I'm using the Aldi brand medium dark beans, which are pretty good. I think these taste really good, and they're not very expensive. Um, Aldi is basically the only supermarket brand I would um, trust. Most other supermarket brands are pretty stale and old, so you try them and you'd get no crema. You get very sour coffees, but with Aldi, I've been getting pretty good results for the past four years, and I've been trying them. All right. So with everything nice and warmed up, let's grind the coffee now. So you want to take out your porta filter. Let's move the cup first. Take the porta filter out. Give it a good dry, give it a good wipe to dry. Um, nice and warm. Okay. Now I'm going to use my scale to measure the inputs and outputs. Um, this machine takes 18 grams of coffee into the double basket. This is the double basket. 
Um, and I'm going to be using this collar, like I said. So this is going to increase the walls of the handle so that when we do the double shot, the, the coffee grounds don't spill on the outside. Otherwise, if we do the double shot amount, uh, the ground coffee might pile up and make a mess as we take the handle out of the grinder cradle. Whereas with this collar, it'll just raise the walls so we don't spill any coffee, basically. Reset to zero and then grind. I'm going to use the double setting on the one o'clock position on this amount dial and grind size six on this grind size dial. So in case this is your first coffee machine, grind size is basically the size of the ground coffee particles. Um, so the smaller the grind size, the finer the particles and the closer they are to basically like flour consistency. Um, the larger the grind size means the coffee particles would be larger and so the gaps between them are larger and you can think of it almost like gravel not gravel um dirt or sand like really larger particles uh how this will affect our coffee a smaller grind size will slow down the shot a larger grind size will speed up the shot uh, we want our shot to take about 25 to 35 seconds we can just say 30 seconds for simplicity 30 seconds for a double shot which is about 40 grams so the, the input was 18 grams, the output should be about double that, so technically 36 grams, but I like multiples of 10, so let's say 40. I've been getting pretty good results with that ratio, most people use the 2 to 1 ratio as well. so we can get a better result. So I've rotated it to the two o'clock position and then I'm gonna give it another half a second or so. Perfect 18 grams, so I'll leave it at the two o'clock mark. Um, then I'll get the tamper. I'm just gonna spread the coffee around and then press nice and firm. You can take this out. <laughs> Make sure your tamp is nice and firm. Make sure that it's even and not wonky to one side or the other. Um, and <laughs> try to rotate at the end to give it a polish and this is what it should look like. This is 18 grams. And if you don't have a scale, that's fine. Just um, grind the coffee, press it down with the tamper, and then look at this silver part. So this silver part should be the same depth for, as the coffee. Um, so when I tamp nice and firmly with 18 grams of coffee in the handle, the silver part disappears, um, which is great. Disappears, and I know I've got the correct amount of coffee. If the tamper doesn't go any further than this, and you can still see some of the silver part, that's too much coffee, and that's an easy way to know. If it's sinking all the way to the basket, really deep, that's too little coffee. Uh, so now you know what, what the correct amount is. You also have the razor tool um, included with your machine. It's basically a pink black piece of aluminium. Um, that Say, for example, you put too much coffee, what it, it'll do is it'll clear out the top layer of the coffee so that it makes sure, it ensures that the coffee is the correct depth. It basically scrapes the top layer off. Uh, you've got inc that included with your machine as well. Right, I'll give the edges a good wipe so that we don't dirty the machine. Lock it in. I'm going to get my cup, get rid of the water. If you like to add any sugars or flavours, add them now because they'll mix with the espresso earlier um, and you'll get a more even cup of coffee. Um, you also have a hot water tap here. That's going to give you straight hot water from the boiler. Quite hot. Um, you can use that for long black coffees, obviously. 
but I also use it for tea bags sometimes. And um, what else? Like adding a little bit of cup, a little bit of water to my cup, just so that the flavors that I add are more evenly mixed. So I'm adding a little bit of sugar now. Uh, yes, I add sugar to my lattes. Um, and yeah, the water helps it dissolve and sort of mix with the espresso. I'm gonna reset my scale again. So now we can measure and time the shot coming out. Like I said, it should be about 30 seconds for a two to one ratio. So for every gram you grind, you want two grams into the cup. So we ground 18, we want 36 in the cup. I'm gonna aim for 40, because that's an easier number to aim for. Cool. And like I said, I've reprogrammed the double button already last night to give me about the correct amount. Otherwise, if you wanna reprogram a button, what you can do is press the program button, then press the button that you wanna reprogram, and the machine will start making coffee, and then press the button again, and then that way it'll memorize and stop making coffee. It'll memorize uh, that amount, and next time you use that button, it'll give you the same amount, roughly. It's not a scientific grade uh, machine, but it'll try to aim for the same amount. A few grams here and there is fine. Uh, a good, uh, an okay inconsistency. Consistency. There's a few grams difference. Uh, but anyway, enough talking, let's brew some coffee. Solid, 11 bar, 12 bar pressure. We've got a good consistent stream coming out. And we're at 30 seconds now, it should stop any minute now. There we go, 32, 33. Uh, that was a good time. I had to add a little bit of water because the water tank was running low, so maybe that contributed. Um, but yeah, that was 41 grams. I'm very happy with that. Uh, I've got some good crema, good pressure, good time, and I bet good flavors as well. Um, Coffee brewing doesn't have to be a scientific experiment, so you don't have to follow the numbers to the dot. Uh, but as long as you're in the, in the right ballpark, it should taste good, especially if you add sugar and milk. You don't have to be exact. But uh, if you do be exact, if you do use high quality beans and you try to be exact, it'll, it'll pay off. It'll give you really good results. Really nice. Really nice. So I'm going to do a bit of clean. Get, get rid of this ground coffee. One tap and it falls out. Then give it a quick flush. Steam. Now, I'll turn the steam on. Obviously, this is a single boiler machine. Uh, you have to wait for the steam to turn on. It takes about 15 seconds. In that time, I go grab my jug. I'm using my own jug here, but your machine comes with the jug as well. Wait for it to start tapping the pump. That's about full pressure now. Then I'm going to turn it off. Position the jug. Turn it back on. You want to keep swirling the milk in a vortex fashion and you want the tip to be close to the surface for the first 10 seconds or so. You will hear the sound change when it goes close to the surface. And then when I raise the jug the sound changes as well, it becomes more muted. So when I'm close to the surface, it will give me more air, more foam, and more texture. And then when I raise it, it stops injecting air and it just heats up the milk. We want it to keep spinning so that the layers get mixed uh, and, it, and the entire coffee, the entire milk will be the same consistency. Otherwise, if you don't spin it, only the top layer will be foamy and that's not a nice, that's not a nice texture. And then I'm gonna stop it when it's too hot to the touch for a second or so, which is right about now. And if I look at my thermometer, that's usually about 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. Before, before I let it cool down, I'm going to give it a quick purge, just to clear out the internals from any milk. 
or the hole, I should say. I clear out the hole for a minute. The machine will cool down. It will give me a bit of water in the tray, and that cools down the boiler. And now it's ready to make another coffee. Easy as that. Well, it's easy once you get used to it. Um, a little bit of practice. Uh, I think this machine really will pay off. It's one of Breville's better machines. It's been um, they're really experts at making this sort of machine. They've been making it for a while now. Um, make sure you use a wet cloth to wipe the outside, otherwise it'll stay dirty. The milk one gets really, really hot, 130 degrees to be exact, and so the milk will basically bake or stick on top of the metal if you don't wipe it straight away. Now, 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 let's get the milk. First thing you want to do is knock it on the counter to break any big air bubbles, and then swirl it around. Once you do this a few times, the surface should be nice and smooth, almost like wet paint, people say. Um, um, but it looks really, really nice. I think it's closer to a cappuccino, I should, if I'm being honest. Um, so more firm than I wanted, but that's alright. Never, never seen it at a cappuccino. Mm, I messed up my latte up. Um, if you do a latte texture, you get thinner milk. I'll just do a circle. You get thinner milk. So I was saying that um, if you aim for a latte texture, you get thin milk and good enough to do latte art. In my case, I got quite thick milk, so <laughs> two centimeters of foam, that's a lot. Uh, so not, a, not, not quite thin enough to do latte art, but it's definitely doable. I've done it so many times. People have done such great latte art with this machine. Uh, but yeah, in my case, I think I foamed it for too much. So I actually got very thick milk. So this is a cappuccino with a circle as art, um, or whatever that is. I'm sure you can make even better coffees. Uh, and hope, hope this video has helped you in learning how to use this machine. And um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Um, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.